I'd like to call to order the City of Littleton City Council regular meeting for Tuesday, June 15, 2021. The time is 6.30 or 18.30. Uh, just a reminder to anyone who wants to speak during public comment tonight, if you will, please sign up at the card in the back of the room. Uh, City Clerk, roll call, please. Mayor Valdez. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Malin. Here. Council Member Driscoll. Here. Council Member Fay. Here. Council Member Grove. Here. Council Member Milliman. Here. Council Member Rednicki. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, please rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you. All right, Council, you have the agenda in front of you. Any changes? Seeing none, it is approved. We'll get down to our uh, comments. We'll start with our city manager. Uh, no report, Mayor. Great. City Attorney. No report, thank you, Mayor. So we'll start with Council Member Milliman. Thank you, Mayor. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, just one update is from South Metro Housing Options. They had their monthly meeting last Thursday. Great discussion. A um, couple of items that um, are worthy to mention. The um, Foster Youth Initiative Program is um, starting to capture some of those uh, youths that have come out of foster care, um, giving them um, vouchers uh, that are last for 36 months so that they um, uh, can be, they can have a house and they have uh, services within or around the city to help them with jobs, um, et cetera. So that's a really successful program. Super excited about that. And then the um, a majority of the housing, uh, the managed housing um, developments that South Metro Housing Options is responsible for are at near capacity. So it's good news in the fact that a lot of um, folks are in homes, but it's bad because there potentially are waiting lists coming um, forward as we all know we have a shortage of housing here in Littleton. So that's it. And it's a little hot. Council Member Grove. No report. Council Member Faye. On last Thursday night, I hosted a Zoom meeting for District 3 citizens, and we had 40 people signed up. Right. I covered 15 topics, lightning rounds, in, uh, in one hour and four minutes. That included questions and answers. Um, subjects covered were code enforcement, uh, reporting on click fix, safety, Highline Canal, of course, homelessness, of course. Um, the thing I emphasized again and again is that more information is available at littletongov.org. Type in what you want to know more about in the search bar. And so I'm just trying to train citizens to go there first. That's all. Great. Thank you. Council Member Driscoll. Or no report. Council Member Renicki. Well, just an update. I am kidding. Trying to get caught up with uh, <laughs> all the good stuff that I need to uh, read. I did, um, I did watch the video of Sean, uh, Sean Walsh's uh, presentation to council study session uh, last month, and then I also met with him one-on-one -on -one, so, uh, last Friday so he could answer my, uh, the questions that I had. So just want to let you know that I feel like I'm somewhat catching up on that issue. All right. Thank you. All right. And the only item I have is just to remind council that Wednesday, tomorrow, at Stern Park, I believe it is, 4 to 6, is our... Uh, authority boards and commission uh, that's actually Thursday night at the museum oh I'm sorry Thursday I'm I'm thinking already ahead okay I'm sorry that's this is the boards and commission uh, recognition that's right this is the dinner at the museum that's Thursday I wrote down on Wednesday that, great thank you so I'll try to mark my calendar make sure I remember how's that great we have no citizens appearance tonight uh, we'll move down to our public comment uh, Mayor Pro Tem, if you will, please. Uh, yeah, no report from me. Um, each speaker will be limited to three minutes. The City Council is not authorized under the Colorado Open Meetings Law to discuss, comment, or take action at the meeting on any issue raised by public comment that is not part of tonight's agenda. 
The mayor may refer the matter to the city manager and or city attorney for immediate comment or to staff to obtain additional information and report back to council as appropriate. Great, thank you very much. All right, the time now is 6.35 and I'll open up the public comments. We'll start with uh, Corey Ritz. On deck will be Pam Chadbourne in the hole, Emily Dykes. Hey, Corey. Hello. Good evening, Council. Uh, it's good to see you all in person. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Appreciate your nice new digs, too. Um, I just want to start by pointing out the substantial progress that's been made um, over the past few years related to housing. Um, multiple studies and um, policies have been completed or adopted, and I think a lot of work has been done related to housing and, and in particular, affordable housing. Um, I think all of you should be commended in terms of uh, maintaining the affordable housing um, continue work plan goal as a council. Uh, it's super important to the health, the vitality of the community, and um, as you know, very challenging and complex problem. While a lot of progress has been made, um, there are a couple of comments that I've heard recently from council members that do concern me a bit. Uh, last week's study session, for example, I heard someone say that uh, the market dictates affordable housing um, and it seems made it seem as though the, the city has little control. Um, but you all do have the ability to make a variety of housing options possible in the community through uh, land use decisions. And I think the best uh, example of this is a potential project that South Metro Housing Options worked on over the last few years, or within the last few months. Um, the deal ultimately fell through, um, but as your economic consultant talked about over the last year in terms of uh, making decisions that help deals pencil and, and make them feasible, um, the decision to adopt the four-story height limit in the downtown area actually um, killed our deal. So uh, five stories would have been a feasible project, uh, would have allowed much needed affordable housing. At four stories, it just didn't work. So. Um, you know, just a huge opportunity missed in terms of um, missing out on affordable housing that we're, we're greatly in need of. Um, and just to be clear, affordable housing can be done um, and is being done in Littleton. Uh, Littleton Crossing came online in 2019, I believe, and it's an affordable housing development. Uh, South Metro Housing Options, as you know, is working on an affordable development at Powers and Lottie. Um, but while some projects are getting done, we certainly um, need the decisions the council will make in terms of land use going forward will greatly impact our ability to make uh, to meet the goals of the housing goals of the, of the city. So um, I just want you to know that SMHO certainly appreciates all the work that you all do. You know it's tough work. Um, we've always appreciated our productive and, and positive relationship with you all, and especially with city staff. Uh, they're great to work with. And the next couple of months are just going to be extra critical in terms of. Um, the land use completion and, and determining how easy or difficult it, it's going to be to meet our affordable housing goals in the community going forward. So thank you very much for your time. As always, if you have, ever have questions or want to discuss housing further, please give me a call. Thank you. Pam Chadborn and Emily, you are up next. Uh, good evening, Council. My name is Pam Chadbourne. I have a blog and I have from here. Um, I'll just actually say I agree with Corey that um, affordable housing is a good thing, and I think that you guys do talk about it sometimes. But you're about to pass a ULUC that doesn't include any requirements on affordable housing, and that's broken. It simply will not accomplish affordable housing. As Corey mentioned, and I do agree with, the market only coincides with what's best for the people when it's going up or going down. There's two times when the market serves the people. All the rest of the time, government is the referee and rule setter for the market because it is a game and you need rules and referees in games. And that's what you are for, is to look at what's best for the people now and in the future. And specifically for you all, you see 30, 60 years in the future for housing that's built now. And that's not happening. So 
Um, yes, we need affordable housing. Um, it needs to be codified and specified and required and quantified in the UOUC. Otherwise, we're not going to get it. You're giving, ask your attorney. You're giving entitlements in this ULUC that you cannot take back. You cannot take them back once you give them. So uh, let me plea for affordable housing and for, um, it is hot. It's too hot too soon. That's due to climate change. We will have regulation within 20, 25 years. The stuff you're building now there is in the UIOC described has no requirements for energy efficiency. You have no modeling to estimate what the energy efficiency of Littleton will be at all, now or in 25 years, based on what's being built. You need this. We need this. It's your responsibility and job to do this. So the people of the future are looking to you. They're dependent on you. They won't know who you are, but they will know the mistakes that you make or omissions or very purposeful, just not doing something that you really need to do. Um, I actually wanted to talk about the, uh, let's see, uh, the claims made in the staff report um, that I probably won't have time to uh, go through them. There's a claim that adding a process for city-initiated rezonings is a best practice, and I'm going to say, really? According to who? That's an opinion at best. There's no proof for it. And uh, the land use and character map, the future map, was developed by about 60 special interest elites, not the people. So um, UOEC isn't meeting the needs of the people. Thanks. Thank you. Next up, Emily Dykes. And if anybody else would like to speak too, just you'll get your chance as well. Hi, how's it going? Uh, good evening, I'm Emily. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak tonight. I uh, have lived here since I was two, and I plan to grow very old in Littleton. Um, and I'm thankful to be a part of uh, a group called Vibrant Littleton. We're a group of citizens that are organized to speak in favor of development um, and just positive change in our community. Uh, first, I wanted to start by thanking the council for the incredible work done on the ULUC. I have read most of it. It is very detailed, very thoughtful, and I appreciate the time and energy that was vested in that. Um, I, on the initial reading, I had a few things that stood out to me. Uh, having been a part of the studio sessions and being familiar with the comprehensive plan and the original housing study that was done, um, I, I'm puzzled about the approach to the ADUs. Uh, the feedback we saw during the Envision Studios made it clear to me that people want ADU options across the city. Uh, the comp plan and the housing study also call for their inclusion as a part of expanding house choice uh, in Littleton. And then, uh, but the draft only allows for very limited contexts, uh, running counter to both citizen feedback and the city's comp plan. Uh, more broadly, I'm concerned that the, the current draft makes little to no provision for mid, the missing middle housing in our city. Uh, in addition to ADUs, duplexes and triplexes provide financially attainable housing options for citizens as well as enhancing walkability. Most, um, many of our beloved sections of town, including the downtown area and around Stern Park, uh, already contain these sort of housing options. Uh, and citizens have asked for this to be incorporated uh, in more areas in our community. Yet the draft ULUC does not allow them, uh, for them in areas they don't already exist. I feel like this is a major missed opportunity. Uh, I think this draft has a long way to go to ensure that we as a city are working towards our stated goal in the, in the comprehensive plan, including cre increasing housing choice, walkability, and inclusivity. We look forward to engaging with each of you during the remainder of the drafting process and to make sure that the restrictions are a reflection of both the comp plan and what citizens are pleading for. During last week's study session, a comment was made that we cannot have control over housing and that the market will make the final deter determination. And while I understand that the market does have some control over housing, I don't think that that sentiment accurately frames the situation. 
The fact is that the current draft of the ULUC is standing in the way of the market having a say. The market is made up of people, and people are asking for ADUs, missing middle housing, and walkability. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. All right, anybody else that would like to speak? Seeing none, it is 6.45. We will close the public comments. Uh, city Manager, City Attorney, anything, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe just a couple of comments. Um, I appreciate the fact that we've had three people comment on our ULUC draft, and some have gotten apparently quite a ways into the document. That's uh, to be congratulated. You know, I think uh, as we've talked with council, quite honestly, for the last couple of years, and specifically this past month, we know that the ULUC, when the council considers adoption in October, it'll never be completely done. There will always be work, and that is the intent of this particular document and process. This is a living document. We're not gonna wait another 30 or 40 years before we try an update. Um, part of the whole process here of the comp plan and our code is to have a regular routine of five years to update the comprehensive plan, and then the code as appropriate, depending on the direction of council through the uh, comprehensive plan. So housing, the council has actually adopted a separate goal, and through the next several months, the next two years, we're gonna be working with our partners, South Metro Housing Options being one of them, to look for strategies to take the ULUC to the next level. So the ULUC is not intended to be the, the end all for all affordable housing by October. That's not possible. It's a very complex issue. It's gonna take a lot of public conversation over time. And as we've talked before, that you know, cities across the country struggle with this issue. And so it's gonna take us time to figure out what's the right mix for us here in Littleton. When we talk about the issue of sustainability and how that might be another piece that we hang off of our city comp plan, and we're gonna have a discussion here in September, I believe, for a very specific goal around sustainability. So the council will have an opportunity to decide how, how much of a piece of the mobile this will be over time. Again, an issue that will take years beyond just the adoption of the ULUC. One of the other things I'd like to encourage the public to do as they read the ULUC is to use the ENCODE process. So you can directly put your comments into the document and so that there's a way for us to see all that comment so the public can also see all of that, and then we can weigh through those things. Uh, the council's got scheduled here two separate meetings to talk about ADUs and kind of the level of uh, development you would like to see on those issues. Uh, the missing middle is another piece that we talked about here probably oh, about a month ago. Uh, the ULUC is gonna be putting in the, the opportunity for that, so to, the levers I think is how we coined that so the council can take advantage of that. We recognize that the missing middle is gonna take more public conversation about site-specific opportunities. And so staff had been proposing that's gonna be some work after October. So again, the ULUC cannot answer all things here uh, and by the end of this year. So mayor and council, that's just a few comments. And again, I, I'm thrilled that people are reading the document and uh, look forward to comments here in the future. City Attorney. Yeah, just briefly, um, I will note that next week uh, City Council uh, will be having a study session on ADU, so that's the 22nd, um, as well as again on July 13th. Um, the City Manager referenced a couple of upcoming dates. Those are the two dates in which Council is going to weigh in on um, at least part of the draft and how we're approaching ADUs and, and offer their suggestions and comments going forward. So public is always uh, encouraged to attend and share their thoughts and comments. Great. Thank you. All right. With that, we'll move on to item number seven on our, on our agenda, consent agenda items. Consent agenda items can be adopted by a simple motion. All ordinances must be read by title prior to a vote of the motion. A consent agenda item may be removed at the request of a council member. We have one item. It is ID number dash 21. 21-109, motion to approve the June 1st, 2021 regular meeting minutes. Second. We have a second. All we need now is a motion. I move to, <laughs> she made the motion. to approve the... <laughs> what Jerry said. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll read I it. Move to, there you go. approve the June 1st, 2021 regular meeting minutes. Second. We, have, we have a motion to second by Council Member Driscoll. Thank you very much. The heat is getting to everybody, obviously. 
All right, council. All right, we're going to do the old vote here. Just one sec. I'm sorry. All right, so it should be. All right, council, if you would please vote. Did it oh, didn't open? How's that? There we go. It's about 10 buttons you push to get there. Looks like Mr. Renicki, we're looking for you. I wasn't at the meeting. Um, I just okay. was. Okay, that's it based on yeah, my I think that. Okay. Sorry? He's approving it based on my certification. That's how it reads. Okay. So, so vote one, you can vote one way or another there. I'm trying to. There we go. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Close. <laughs> All right. The vote is seven in favor. The motion carries unanimously. Great. Thank you very much. We have no general business tonight, but we do have one item under second readings. We have ordinance number 11-2021, an ordinance on second reading amending Title II, Chapter 10 of the Littleton City Code pertaining to the licensing authority. And council, so we are going to consider a code change to the licensing authority to reflect the current Colorado revised statutes. So we will be taking action to either approve or not approve the, uh, the update that's being presented. With that, I'll turn it over to the city attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll try to be as brief as possible. I think I can accomplish that. So uh, this is really just a cleanup ordinance. Um, back in October of 2018, uh, the state legislature recodified a lot of sections dealing specifically with uh, liquor, um, and they recodified things into different articles. So what the proposed ordinance does is really two things. One, it references a, the correct section of state code to refer to. And two, it also gives our licensing authority the ability to hear retail marijuana complaints and uh, things of that nature. So when the voters approved that this past November, um, this was one of the sections that we needed to update to allow our licensing authority to uh, operate um, with retail marijuana licensing. That's it. Great. Thank you. Council, any questions? Looking for a motion. Mayor, this is a public oh, hearing. Oh, yes, it is. Man, I am really trying to move us along here tonight, aren't I? All right. It is uh, 652. I'll open it up to a public hearing. Do we, do we have anybody that would like to speak tonight? Uh, All right, <clears throat> Pam Chadbourne. Yeah, Pam Chadbourne. I still live a block and a half from here. And um, my comment relates to the composition of authority paragraph. And um, I'll just kind of observe that I've attended for the past four years or so almost all of the City Council, Planning Commission, Historical Preservation Board meetings. I've attended some SHMO meetings, um, actually SMHO meetings. Uh, and. I'm uh, concerned about a conflict of interest uh, clause that we should have somewhere in our code. I don't know that it belongs in just the liquor li or the licensing authority code, um, but reading it made me realize that I don't see the protections against conflict of interest in that requirement. Um, obviously, it's a you know legal decision about where this best belongs in the code. Um, it's handy if it's in the composition of every board and commission so that people can see what would constitute conflict of interest for that particular decision-making body. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about conflict of interest. I will say um, compliments to Colleen um, for the conduct of the licensing authority, um, they have been, actually I didn't mention them when I said, but I've been to um, many of their meetings and it's well conducted. These are um, engaged and interested, interested citizens who are making good decisions on behalf of the people. And I'm, I don't think there's conflict of interest that I've seen to date on that board. Um, but, other boards and commissions definitely have people um, who are engaged with 
the conduct of business and can profit from business on which decisions are made by that board and commission. And that concerns me greatly. And we need somewhere in our code to prevent that on all the boards and commissions. If you're going to profit, if you do something that lets you make a profit, or your family, or maybe, um, you know, there's a question about how far this goes, um, then maybe you shouldn't be making decisions on these matters. And um, I won't name the names that I wrote down. Maybe someday I'll write to them to you, but write them to you. But um, yeah, we've got. Uh, a lot of people on boards and commissions now that uh, make a profit off of things that they decide on either directly or um, in general when people see they're on a board or commission uh, they will bring business to them in anticipating that they're going to uh, get a benefit I think um, so let me just mention my concern about conflict of interest and you know should we add that sure. thanks Thank you very much. Do we have anybody else who'd like to speak? Seeing none, it is 6.55. I'll close public comment. Council comments? Motion? A mayor, I move to approve ordinance 11-2021 on second reading amending title three, chapter two of the Littleton City Code pertaining to the licensing authority. Got a motion. Second. We have a motion and second by council member Grove. Um, I, I, before we get into our discussion, I, I just want to say that I, as, as, a, as a member who served on planning commission for about 12 years, and uh, Mr. Renick, you can, you've done about 19 on the planning commission, at no time did I or anyone that was on that board ever personally profit from being on the planning commission. Uh, I, I think it is an outrageous comment to suggest that our people that serve on our boards and commissions and authorities somehow profit by the decisions that they make on that. Anybody else would like to make any comments? If not, let's put her to a vote. We have a motion. City Clerk, if you could read the motion, please. Absolutely. Uh, council, Is your mic on? My apologies. Council Member Milliman moved and Council Member Grove seconded to approve Ordinance 11 2021 on second reading, um, amending. I'm sorry, I'm scrolling up here on my screen. Amending Title Three, Chapter Two of the Littleton City Code pertaining to the licensing authority. Great, Council, any questions? If not, do I think, well, we've got to be exact in our record. It's Title Two, not Chap, not Title Three. Um, and I just would want the record to reflect it's that. It's Title Three, Chapter Two. I've got, I've got Title Two on my agenda. Chapter Title Two, 10. Chapter Three. Thank you. And my, mine says Title Three, Chapter Two. That's interesting. So it is indeed. Yeah. So could you, what is the correct motion that we have here? Reed's pulling it. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. It is Title Two. Chapter 10, sections one and two. So it'll be a move to approve an ordinance on second reading amending Title II, Chapter 10 of the Littleton City Code. And Councilmember Milliman, if you could restate your motion, please. I move to approve. Ordinance 11 2021 on second reading amending Title II, Chapter 10 of the Littleton City Code pertaining to the licensing authority. Second. And we have the motion and still by um, a second by Council Member Grove. Any other questions? If not, if you will, Council, please vote. Okay, doke. The clerk. My apologies. The vote is seven in favor. The motion carries unanimously. Great. Thank you. Uh, with that, Council, we're we're going to move to our study session in ten minutes. It is now just about seven. So at seven ten, we will reconvene for our study session.
This meeting is adjourned.
All right, I'd like to go ahead and open the City Council, the City of Littleton City Council study session for Tuesday, June 15, 2021. It is 7 10. All right, all council members are present. Council, we have a couple items on our agenda tonight. We'll start with ID number 21 106, next generation advisory committee update. So, what we're going to hear from the next gen is a review. Uh, they're going to next gen is going to review with city council their plan for the upcoming year and council kind of like what we did with transportation board a couple weeks ago uh, we will uh, uh, provide direction to them uh, also to help them understand what they want uh, what we would like to see coming from them all right with that i'll turn it over to the city manager all right thank you mr mayor good evening everybody so as we talked with the Transportation Mobility Board last week, we had identified uh, three of our working commissions to spend a little extra time with, and uh, the next generation was one of those. And uh, Pam Grove, our council member here, she's the liaison from the council to this particular committee. And so as the mayor said, we're here the, this evening to look at their work plan. Uh, they've identified a couple of issues that overlap with the council goals and uh, they're asking for a little more direction about what else may be of importance to the city council. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Carl Hunsager, who's the staff liaison to this committee. He's with the planning department. Thank you very much. Uh, Carl Hunsager, planner with the city of Littleton, and a uh, proud member of as liaison to this uh, fine uh, advisory committee. Um, it is a pleasure to be here in front of council. Um, so just a little background on the the committee they were um, formed three years ago and I believe formalized um, into the uh, city bylaws uh, two years ago. Um, they have uh, 15 members uh, slated. Um, unfortunately, we've lost uh, two members. One, um, our chairperson just notified us today that um, due to his expanding family, uh, he is um, having to move outside of the city of the limits. Uh, so he is uh, resigning his. Um, position on the committee, but um, it is in very able hands uh, with two uh, vice chairs, Alyssa and Gregory. Um, so the sub the committee has uh, its primary uh, meeting once a month, um, and then three subcommittees um, that meet also uh, once a month. So they have a sustainability subcommittee, a unified land use code, um, formerly known as the zoning code uh, subcommittee, uh, rebranded, um, and then. Uh, DIEB, which is diversity, inclusion, equity, and belonging. Um, and so uh, those subcommittees report back to the, um, the regular committee, and it's a very collaborative environment. And so the work plan in front of you tonight is uh, the work to tie um, the uh, ideas and the work of these uh, fine individuals, uh, but also tying those to the uh, council goals. And so we've worked through both the regular meetings and the subcommittee meetings. Um, and identifying how these align with the objectives as established by council. And um, with that, I will let the, uh, hand it over to um, these members, introduce yourselves. And um, <coughs> I believe each is going to kind of walk through the different uh, components of the work plan. And uh, we're hoping for a, a conversation tonight to make sure that these align and you know, flush out. And we've also identified potential deliverables. Um, for each of these. So the committee has been pro prolific in the past uh, with reports and um, other things. So uh, making sure that the deliverables also align with uh, the needs of council. So, thank you. Um, I'll go ahead and start us off. Uh, my name is Alyssa Campbell and the co-vice chair of the Next Generation Advisory Committee. This is my second year as co-vice chair. Um, last year in 2020, we did turn out quite a number of deliverables to council. I think we want to increase that amount and get you guys some more paperwork to read through this year. Um, so on the first page of that work plan, we have the goals for the Next Generation Advisory Committee as a whole. Um, those include um, some items that we have turned in and some items that we are currently working on, one of which is making Littleton more fun and attractive. Um, we're going to pull together comments from our last session on June 3rd um, and get something formalized and over to you guys, hopefully by the end of the month or early July. Uh, this, this study session was one of our deliverables because this was a, this was a pull to bring all of this together and put this in front of you today. So here you go. It's delivered. <laughs> um, 
Uh, check. Um, we also work at want to focus on the community engagement and research. Um, and so we met with Sean Walsh at our June 3rd meeting, and we plan to continue that conversation and have more discussion about the city financials um, budgetary process, kind of what the next generation, younger generation, feels about the financial state of the city and what our ideas are to alleviate that burden. Um, and I think that that's going to come probably after the ULUC comments close, because right now that's our biggest push. Um, those have been delegated out to the subcommittees, which we'll pass on later. But um, that is definitely on our agenda to get, to get in front of you guys. And then, of course, the ULUC engagement. We plan to submit a big document to you guys, sort of like we did last year. Um, they're going to be addendums to the documents we submitted last year. Um, in regards to focusing on the ULUC through the focus of sustainability. And then I believe the ULUC subcommittee is going to focus majorly on affordable housing and ADUs. Um, and then comments back to council. And then with that, I'll turn it over to. And if I could actually just also, so one of the things that the committee has looked at was um, staff presented what we did for engagement regarding kind of the pre-draft in the ULUC and the committee um, provided uh, feedback and comments um, on our survey questions, our video formats and things like that. So they've already also been working closely with staff um, and providing feedback on our efforts. Yes. So it should be noted. And then I will uh, let Greg talk about the zoning ULUC subcommittee. Thank you very much for having us here today. Um, I'm really excited to be part of this uh, group. Um, there's a ton of energy on uh, on the group, and there's a lot of enthusiasm to bring um, these deliverables to you um, over this next year. Uh, for the zoning com uh, committee, as you guys can kind of see in front of you, um, what we really want to do is, with the ULUC um, coming out, we want to make sure that we uh, go through that with a fine uh, tooth comb and um, give you the best comments that we have. And I actually think that we have a lot of really capable people um, on our group to provide some of those comments. Um, some of the things that we'd be looking at uh, are ADUs, um, along with the, uh, <coughs> uh, the low and medium uh, housing affordability. Um, what we would like to do is actually try and put out a or, um, or, or encourage uh, a report to be done um, about like UL, the ULUC and its effect on uh, low and medium incoming, income housing. Um, we think that Littleton does have a problem with the missing middle and we want to make sure that that, that is addressed. Um, along with the zoning, uh, we will be looking at the Littleton Boulevard uh, Economic Corridor. Um, you know, one of our tasks has been to make Littleton a little bit more fun, and I think that there's a lot of opportunity um, in that area to brighten that part of our town up. Um, so I'm really hoping that, uh, yeah, that we can provide some really good feedback. And, and truthfully, I hope that, that you guys take that feedback um, to heart. Thank you. Uh, should I be passing this on? Uh, I will be passing this on to uh, Emily, um, who has been our secretary uh, and has been outstanding, and she'll be talking about sustainability. I'm Emily, and as Greg mentioned, I'm the secretary of the group. Um, I'm also on the sustainability subcommittee and the diversity subcommittee. But, uh, talk to you about uh, diversity so um, I will talk to you a little bit about what we have planned in the sustainability subcommittee um, so we have uh, we had a really great conversation about uh, Jack Rats Hill Park um, and I guess there's uh, this is something that comes up a lot to City Council perhaps um, you're more aware of it than, than we are um, but uh, we want to we want to give uh, something to City Council to reflect upon uh, how to move forward on that um, issue. And that also um, ties into Powers Park. And um, uh, we're hoping to meet with um, some different people for background on the issues um, and potentially try to uh, re-engage some kind of formal process uh, for looking at how the park could be maintained and um, just serve the community the best way possible. Um, and then the other really big thing we're doing right now is looking at the ULUC, 
again with the sustainability focus. Um, so we've uh, broken it up. Uh, everyone's taking a different section. We were able to use the, one of the features of just searching for the word sustainability and also just um, taking different sections that directly refer to that. Um, so we're going to look at that and how it um, how it ties into our goals in the subcommittee, and we want to present those to you as well. And then, um, other than that, I think the people in the committee are just uh, really, you know, passionate about environmentalism and sustainability. And I think over the next year, we're we're going to see just um, a lot of creative ideas come about from the conversations that we have. So please look forward to that. Thank you. And this is Susie. Thanks, she Emily. Will the Hi, I'm Susie. Um, I am new to this committee. I just started my term this year. Um, I'm also new to Littleton. I have only been here about a year and a half, but um, so I'm really excited that this this committee exists for um, for young people who want to be engaged. And I just thank all of you for taking the time to hear us and to to have the committee. Um, I agree that we have some really passionate people here. So. Um, Hopefully, we'll have some, some good stuff to give you. Um, with our diversity, inclusion, equity, and belonging subcommittee, um, we looked at a number of different, different issues, the first one being the city's inclusion, inclusion initiative. Um, so we have a goal of meeting with the city HR to sort of understand that initiative a little bit more um, and see where there's any alignment for us to have an impact there. Um, one of the... Um, one of the topics is inclusion, or I'm sorry, um, inclusive language in, in just the way the city operates. So we want to take a look at that with um, the city HR department. Um, get out the vote. Um, I think this is an area where we really have an opportunity to shine because we need young people to be voting. Um, so hopefully we're speaking to our own demographic here. So we are looking for um, different collaboration opportunities within the city, specifically Western Welcome Week um, and recruiting young members to join this committee, um, specifically targeting the, the really young, the, the high school side of it. Um, we have one member right now who's in high school and we hope to, you know, keep that momentum going. Um, we, over the past year, um, there has been a diversity memo um, that the subcommittee put together. It's very powerful, and I believe it went out, right? Um, so we're just waiting on signatures from two more members of the okay. group, but you should be receiving that within the next uh, couple weeks, if not sooner. And then the diversity memo just outlines what, what our goals are, um, really why we're here, why, why this subcommittee exists. And then um, one of the most important things that, that's really drawn a lot of attention in our conversations is the land acknowledgement. Um, so we feel there is a lot of opportunity to really enhance that, um, that land acknowledgement and really um, highlight some of the indigenous history of Littleton. So a lot of the um, exhibits at the museum and within the city are really focused on um, you know, white colonialism, and we want to make sure that um, proper history is represented throughout our city and how we can really share that story with people um, in ways that are kind of um, just ingrained in, in the city life. So that's all. So we would love any kind of feedback from you about kind of what we've already put together, if there's any thing that you feel would be in addition useful to you you as council in terms of how we approach this year. Council, I'll start it out here. I'm, I'm particularly interested in hearing uh, on the page two here, where you have the low income, uh, medium income housing affordability study. I think that's excellent. Look forward to hearing from Next Gen on that, as well as the uh, AD News and Lilton Bull. Uh, that, that's something I'm all over too. I'd like to see some improvement from the, say, from the courthouse, you know, on up Broadway. I've always, you know, kind of joked around that it'd be nice to have an arch there at Littleton Boulevard, just off of Broadway there. Those kind of things, you know, just that, uh, let us know, you know, you're, as a committee, you know, let us know what you guys really think what it'll take to finalize Littleton Boulevard. But those are the things I'm most excited about. Uh, Council, I'll jump in. Um, how can you? How can your committee get the ULUC uh, document out to your to your age group and have them actually? participate and engage. You got any thoughts on that? 
Yeah, so that's definitely something we have discussed. Right. Um, and a couple of things that we have talked about. Uh, first of all, it's it's not just our age group, but there's a, we want everyone sure, to, to read it. Um, so there's a lot of people who um, who are underserved or not underserved, underrepresented in city government um, that may not have access to to the code, just in in really simple ways of like maybe they don't have a computer to sit down and read it. So making sure we have print copies available at the library. Um, I know that's you know it's it's big, but um, things like that. And uh, just for public campaigns that it exists, I think that's... Yeah, so maybe team up with our marketing department, Kelly, and maybe she can assist with some uh, so, some signage or verbiage or something like that. Absolutely. On that on that same note, I find that the city of Littleton's website is incredibly Perfect. difficult to navigate. Okay. I absolutely cannot stand the city of Littleton. I website. want to add that. On. <laughs> that's the kind of comments we need. I, I can't I can't stand it. It's so not, it's not user friendly and it's not easy to find anything. And if I went to go find the ULUC draft without already having it in my email, I don't know if I could find it. Okay. That makes it really hard for yeah. if you're not determined, you're not going to be able, you're not going to spend 20 minutes on the website trying to find it. Melissa, thank you for saying that because I thought it was me and my generation. <laughs> no, I can't, no, I can't. No, the, website, the website's very outdated. I was afraid um, to say anything. You know, so thank you for saying <laughs> Thank you for the feedback. Jack S. Hill, I've been on uh, uh, council for four years. I don't think we once brought up Jack S. Hill. What are you hearing about Jack S. Hill from South Metro? Um, or, uh, from well, South other than that little pond that is over there. But well, this came through. Oh, uh, uh, this came through me as a liaison to South Suburban, and we touched on it briefly. But basically, especially with COVID, people have been abusing it and oh, overusing it. And right, I remember those comments. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's and so sometimes we, as looking at it from the city perspective or South Suburban kind of get stuck in what we've always done. So we kind of wanted to see what they could come up with right. in terms of fresh ideas. You know, I've noticed there's a place I hike called Mary's Meadow and, you know, during COVID, there was one little trail just this wide for one person and a dog, right? And during COVID, it went out 10 feet both directions. <laughs> That's all filled back in now and, you know, everybody's not using that as much as they used to. So maybe that'll, Jack S will come back. And then my last comment was, on your diversity, inclusion, equity, belonging, is there language somewhere in, are you, what are you trying to get through on that? Is, are you looking to publish something? Are you looking to change something in HR? Are you looking to, I'm not quite sure what you're trying to um, address. One of the issues, and I've even heard it tonight, is the, like, for instance, the word guys. You know, we're not, I'm not a guy. So when people address a group of people okay. as guys, then that's not inclusive. It's not including including okay. people who either don't identify as a guy or maybe. Um, so you're looking to bring awareness. Yeah, I think just oh, okay. greater awareness to make sure that people feel included. Um, okay. You know, in in as you can see, I mean, the, the positions of power are, you know, by and large, held by men, and that reflects in our language. And so, if we want to have an inclusive community with a, a diversity of people in positions of power, I think it can start through how we think about the issue. So I think, um, yeah, it would start out more as like a, a campaign to bring awareness, but it's something that creates a bit of backlash or blowback because, you know, it changes habits. So. And just for the record, too, that the previous mayor was a female. We had many, Great. many yeah. females. So it isn't, it's, it's sometimes a uh, male, sometimes it's a female. Those, that kind of language may be offensive to some, but that is what they were. Right, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That's a breath of fresh air to see you here and uh, listen to your perspective. Uh, um, I always remember on planning commission, we always had uh, the average age of people that showed up for our meeting from the, from the audience was probably 50, 55, it seemed. <laughs> so uh, screaming uh, for uh, a different view from younger people. Um, let's see, a uh, couple of things uh, stand out for me that you talked about is uh, the ULOC perspective. It would be just great to get your perspective from uh, your age group. Uh, it's, uh, as you know, it's the most important, that's number one goal of, uh, of council here to get it approved uh, by October. So the more people you can get to look at it, the better. Uh, not that hard to find. Just go to Envision Littleton on the uh, right-hand side of one of those boxes. Uh, 
click on it, it pops up almost immediately. So um, and it's fairly easy to add your comments. Uh, two other items, uh, and the mayor mentioned them too. We both live uh, three blocks away from Littleton Boulevard. Littleton Boulevard's always been kind of moping along. Uh, it'd be nice to see some pool along Littleton Boulevard, some activity, some action, some excitement. Uh, it's got a, a lot of, just like I say, businesses that are moping along. Uh, second was the uh, ADUs. That's a, a, very, a very large part of the uh, very large change in our from our current zoning code. Uh, so it'd be nice to get your perspective on that. Uh, uh, proposed, uh, well, in the first draft, not that it'll, it'll end up that way, but they're allowed in all districts, uh, pretty much all districts, residential districts. Um, and, uh, but it'd be good to get your perspective that, that, that you might be the people uh, living in some of these. Uh, if you're a boomeranger, you might be living in them, or uh, maybe for free, or, uh, or if you're renting one out. So. Items here and clear to my part. Thank you all for coming tonight and for serving on Next Gen and for the work that you've turned out so far. I personally appreciate it a lot. Um, this group is so talented, right? I and many of the other council members sat in on the most recent um, Board of Commission interviews, and I think I joked at the time. You know, put this in the shredder and go build a rocket. Like everybody had like some incredible life experience or some wonderful advanced degree or something. And uh, Council Member Grove was gracious enough to invite me to participate in some of the interim uh, vacancy appointments. And so I know that, that you have a very, very talented group of people. I think your work plan is uh, spot on, and I just want to encourage you in it. And. Uh, you certainly don't need me to uh, tell you this, but I hope you feel confident in um, <clears throat> well, speaking confidently. And uh, this is Molly. Yeah. Yeah. Molly is a part of our group. She is another wonderful that. part of our group. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for the. I was like, I'm not sure if I should be here or not. Okay. Glad you're here. Sorry about that. We normally have the police escort people. I know. I was like, <laughs> Nope, that was all. Um, <laughs> Scott, you have to start over now. Yeah, I'll just finish up. And I just I hope you feel confident in, in taking up your appropriate space and in how the city operates. I think you have a lot to say, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing it. Kelly. Hi. You guys are fit. You guys, ladies and gentlemen, fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. Old sorry, lady. I totally slipped. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are fantastic. That covers everybody. Um, thank you for all the hard work, and I agree with Scott. Everything, one hundred percent of what he said. Um, of course, you know you may not know, but um, affordable housing is near and dear to my heart, and um, I am very, very, very interested in the zoning subcommittee and what comes out of it. And I feel like that housing ties back to a lot of other subjects that you've touched on. Um, the OUC obviously um, will play a big part of this, but sustainability, transportation, diversity, and inclusion, all kind of back to housing. So thank you, thank you, thank you for making that a big priority. I wanted to put a little bug in your ear. There is, and I just found this out, there's an affordable housing conference in October uh, that South Metro Housing Options will be uh, uh, participating in. I don't know if that's in the option for one or two of you to go, and if it costs a little money, uh, we can take up a collection. There you go. <laughs> and I think it's, it's in Keystone or Beaver Creek or something. It's up in the mountains. I've heard that is a fantastic conference. You will learn a lot about housing in this Front Range area. Very well attended, very well supported. Highly, highly recommend one of you go or two of you. Um, I agree with Jerry Lilton and everybody else, Lilton Boulevard. It is ripe and ready to become something fantastic and great and wonderful. And I think I said this at another meeting, um, a prior meeting, the bus rapid transit along Broadway is um, in the future. And to connect that corridor to downtown Littleton, such a great opportunity for us. So think out of the box. I mean, I've even heard of, of maybe there's a trolley car, you know, or some kind of a, 
something that would connect Littleton Boulevard or um, yeah, would connect Broadway to downtown Littleton, something in that median area. It's cool. I mean, there's a lost coffee coming on it's in the old um, gas station. Who else? Who knows what else is coming along Littleton Boulevard? It's going to be so great. So anyway. So excited for uh, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I jump in real quick? I'll listen so I can just let Carol Faye. I'm sorry. Fire away. Do you have any specifics in mind for making Littleton fun and attractive? Um, I will I will jump in on that. Um, so one of so I know that the, the question is specific to, to make it fun and attractive to young people in the city. And while we love the ideas of the engagements of murals on the street or painted items on manhole covers, we think that that all adds a lot of vibrancy. That's not really what makes Littleton attractive to what I, what I think our group feels is attractive. Um, for us, it's the affordable housing. For us, it's the um, inclusivity in the language. For us, that's, those are the things in the city of Littleton that's really going to attract and retain us to stay here more than having items to bring in tourism. As a new, I'm about to have my first child, which is very exciting. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, you know, the first time that I joined, I entered Littleton, my wife is from here. Um, the Littleton Museum um, is something that I find fun and attractive. Um, and it's, for me, like, that's a sticking point, making sure that, like, the, the museum, the library, and resources like this, which go back to like making sure that we have resources available to everybody, um, is fun and attractive. That's what attracts me as a young person who just bought their first home to Littleton. Thank you. So, so I was just going to say, I took Mark's advice. I went on to our littletongov.org, and this is for the people watching mainly. And as soon as you pull up our homepage, you click on the Vigil of Littleton, and you're right there. Take you right there as soon as I push it, and then just gives you directions on how to uh, uh, how to interact with the document. And at the very bottom of that, or, uh, you know, after the bottom of those directions, it, you just click on the document. So pretty. Uh, I figured it out. I do think that the ULUC website is pretty good, and I think that we. I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I do think that the the ULUC Vision Littleton website actually is formatted. Well, I haven't done it yet, so I'm glad yeah. you guys brought it up. And I have I have the hard copy right there, but I know to engage, I got to use the system. So um, I do like the Envision Littleton website um, way better than I like the City of Littleton website. However, I would say that if I didn't know that the ULUC was in on the Envision Littleton page, I wouldn't know to click on that button. Maybe that's what we do. I agree with you. It wouldn't, it I, wouldn't, say, I wouldn't know that that's where to go to right. read the document. Right. Uh, before we move on to the next council member, did, do you have something you want to present? Molly? Is it Molly? Yeah, I'm Molly. Um, I'm so thinking of another thing. <laughs> this is what we've been going over. And Molly, maybe just uh, what committees you are on and how uh, long yeah, um, I am on the sustainability subcommittee as well, um, and I could, I would love to be on all of them. I just, I also have two new toddler twins, so I can only have as much time as I can. Um, but I'm on the sustainability subcommittee, and um, so you know, I know that they've, I'm certain they did a fantastic job already. Okay. Is there anything, there's anything else? Anything you want to add? You talked about all those things. Um, sorry, I just kind of joined in a little bit late. <laughs> but I mean, I, I really am excited, you know, for me personally, I'm excited for the kind of the stewardship sustainability plan, the ability for us to be able to provide feedback about the um, ULUC because to me personally, you know, going back to like what makes Littleton fun and engaging for you know, something that I keep thinking about how unique Littleton is, is that the fact that I can be on this kind of committee, and I feel like me or my generation, maybe, but I feel like my generation likes to be very involved and engaged and feel like they can contribute, and um, this group is exactly that, and it's, it's really fun because we get to see, sit here and be part of this, and, and one of the things that I actually didn't, 
you know, I've learned a lot about Littleton through this process, and um, the fact that we have these sustainability initiatives has been um, really cool for me to see, and I don't know if I would have known that, per se, if I wasn't on this committee. So going back to what's fun, I guess. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Councilman Rennick. I just uh, indulge me to tell one quick story that I always tell about how Littleton has changed over the years. 17 years ago, I was at an Abe's Cafe with a fellow planning commissioner. Uh, we sat uh, at downtown, no longer there, uh, sat in a window having our lunch, and a young couple walked by on the sidewalk, and we looked at each other and said, oh my God, a young couple just walked to downtown Littleton. And really, it was like a, an event. And now you compare it to today, uh, where... Uh, People like might feel out of place because uh, there's lots and tons of younger people in our downtown. That's what's changed over 17, 20 years in Littleton. So uh, uh, it's it's really your community where, oh, me in particular, you know, kind of at the end of uh, my stay in Littleton, and it's your town. So uh, get involved. Yeah. Yeah. No. Thank you. Too. Um, I think we all see this as kind of a collaboration that we're all working together since we all live here we all have a stake in in the community so i appreciate that yeah council member grove then me um i just wanted to hopefully everybody has noticed the amount of um, topics that they are addressing this group is addressing and producing <coughs> actually something for us to work on uh, to look at <coughs> excuse me um they hope to be the, one of the first in-person media uh, groups to come back, so we hope we can make that happen. Um, everybody on the committee raised their hand, said yes, they would like to come back in person, so we're hoping to make that happen. Another thing I think that's noticeable about this group is it's very nimble. They can move very quickly, and um, some things they've spent a lot of time on, but other things, excuse me, <coughs> other things, they just happen to have like a citizen engagement memo. They just happen to be talking about that and they put that together very quickly. Also, <coughs> I'm so sorry. <coughs> uh, in terms of process, um, what I've discussed with Mark, um, instead of, ha we kind of were a little bit haphazard in the beginning in terms of what they um, produced, when they produced it, and how to, it got to everybody, to staff included. So what we're asking them to do is to produce their memo goes to me and to Carl, and then it goes to the city manager's office, and then it, it will go out to you guys. So that's just to make sure we aren't having things where one case Alyssa sends something out, another case I send something out. <coughs> so apologize. Um, and we wanted to quit on that. So I just wanted you to know that uh, for your own edification. Great. Uh, Scott can go after me in here a second. So, uh, First of all, I, I, I'm excited about where you guys are heading. It, it's been kind of quiet, really. We haven't heard from, council has not heard from the group uh, enough, that's for sure. Um, I, I really, and I know that uh, you, you put out some information, but it just never really got its home. So I really feel like you guys are there now. When I, when I see some of the things you're considering to look at, or going to look at, you know, such as the accessory uh, dwelling units, Littleton Boulevard, uh, community engagement. I, I think those are huge. And, and, and we, when we originally put this uh, board together, that's exactly what I thought, envisioned that you guys would be doing, uh, really coming out there, because we really wanted to hear information from the, the younger generation. Funny about the younger generation is they become the next older generation, and somebody else will come in behind you and say, boy, are you guys bad. Okay, so it, it, so we, but we want to hear from you. So I think you guys are on target. All bad. <laughs> What's that? You're all bad. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but uh, but I think you're. Yeah, I, I think you guys are really. You're, you're, you're going in the right direction. I'm really excited about that. Uh, a couple other things too. Littleton Boulevard. I'm excited that you're going to look at that. I would also encourage you to get with the uh, the uh, Historic Preservation Board because they can give you some history of Littleton Boulevard and and much of the architecture that's on on Littleton Boulevard. It's surprising what's there, and, and other cities just don't have it like Milton Boulevard does. So if you really can the next generation to really start to be aware of that, so keep sharing that kind of thing. Uh, affordable housing, yeah, I think affordable housing is always big. I've, I've been in affordable housing for over 30 years, primarily senior subsidized. 
also for uh, disabled and other folks too. So if you ever have any questions, I'm willing to you know come to you, talk to you guys, give you my uh, my thoughts on it. You know, the, uh, one thing for sure, I'll give you exactly how I feel about it. I won't do any. Uh, I don't do the uh, color things with the paintbrush. I just go in there and say how things are. So uh, I would love to talk to, to the group about that sometime. Share my thoughts at least. And also, I'm um, uh, I'm a stats guy. I love stats. That's why when I said, well, the, the, the previous mayor was a, a female, and, uh, and, I, and, I was, and I was sitting there thinking about that, well, the, the previous two, uh, of the four, two were female, and then when I was thinking of the city attorney, of the last six city attorneys, uh, three of them were female, so it, it's really a balance, so Lilton has done a really good job, so I'm a stats guy, so when someone throws something in, I'm like, oh, so, so uh, anyway, thank you, I really... What I see tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to say, you better back it up. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm really encouraged. And, and I want to give Council Member Grove uh, some kudos on this because you really got this thing uh, moving. It was one thing to get started. That, and uh, and, and uh, Council Member Schlechter, he's the one that got started. I, and, I, and I really appreciate him doing that. Uh, it's one thing to get things started. It's another thing to get things moving. And I think that's where you guys are now at the point where you're finally moving. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, just in case it's of interest to this group, I have a hunch maybe it is. I love your work plan. Very busy. If you get bored, uh, float the idea of community supported agriculture amongst yourself. I would love to see it happen in the city. It's a, it's a major uh, amenity. Uh, it's nice. I'm going to suggest. That you guys take a little tour of Scott's backyard. <laughs> you want to see a garden and how to sustain your family. Go to his backyard. It is awesome. We'll look forward to that invitation. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> that includes a walking that includes tour. dinner, right? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I got to throw in there. An old guy like Mark, too, used to feed his family, too, with, with his garden. When he does. It isn't just these young people, older people did it, too. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he did. We, we, had, we had our neighbors passing out lettuce this weekend. Uh, is that something that sustains just a, a single family, or is it. No, okay. generally the way it works, just in a nutshell, is uh, you. Get a group of people to pay a subscription fee that funds the operation of the farm and throughout the growing season they come and pick up a share and you can get as creative as you want to the denver botanical gardens has a csa out at chadfield that's really just too far and i think they do things like yak meat in addition to a kind of um, more more yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm, yeah. Uh, in addition to sort of more recognizable uh, vegetables, and I think they may, may even do a fruit share. They have an orchard or, or brambles or something. But uh, yeah, I think it'd be, I think it'd be a remarkable uh, amenity for the city. Scott, would you consider community garden plots as community agriculture, like the kind where um, you go in and garden your own plot? Um, in, in the city provided lot. So I and if I'm not if I'm not misstating his position, uh, public works director Keith Reeser uh, have a, have a real interest in expanding the number of community gardens in the city. We have two right now. Mm -hmm. One is called the Pea Patch over by Stern Park. I was a member for a couple of years. It's a really cool community. There's another one uh, called the Berry Gardens over off of Well Berry and Powers. If I've got that right, yeah. um, but it's different in that you're you're having to do the growing yourself. In the community-supported agriculture uh, program, you pay professional farmers to do it for you, and then you come and pick up your subscription if you don't have time. I would suggest that again, uh, like I suggested, me for affordable housing. You might have a, a council member or mayor pro tem there to talk to you guys about because I know he has a wealth of information there. Did you want to chime in on anything else? Um, just a quick thing. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned they were a little slow to get started. Uh, they put together quite a few documents over the last year, and they have come in bits and pieces. Would it be advantageous for those to wrap them up and put all their documents in one place? I mean, they did feedback on Week on Sun Main. They did a, a sustainability in the ULC document. They did a big study on mobility and a report, citizen engagement. I mean, yeah, Mark. 
if I may. <clears throat> the natural place where we would do that is take all those documents for our committee and actually put them on our website. There you go. So we are more than happy to do that. I have some good news I did want to comment. We are actually in the process of evaluating the website and proposing to upgrade that thing because it hasn't been touched in quite some time. So actually, I appreciate the comment that it doesn't necessarily work that well. I get frustrated by it. And you are right, the Envision Littleton is a little separate piece that uh, we worked on specifically for that effort. So uh, interesting, this conversation kind of touched on all that. Not so we can take those documents and put it on the website. And just little things like their minutes are on the um, calendar. So if you try to find their minutes, it, it's really convoluted. Um, so maybe making their even their page a little bit more robust, I'd, sure. Absolutely. It, it wouldn't take them. I, the, all of our documents are currently housed in a SharePoint um, that is easily I shared, know about it. which is oh. easily shared. <laughs> I, I will make sure that those are uh, more publicly involved. And I mean, I just want to say one of the great things about this committee is just so many of these topics start with a conversation. So, you know, the topics about the parks started with a conversation with South Suburban. And so we are pacing some of these deliverables out so they're not all going to hit at the same time especially since most of their focus is on that unified land use code and providing meaningful feedback on that. But you know, we look forward to providing that and we'll make sure that it's easier to be found. I just want to make sure council understands that they're doing a lot of work, but they've already done a lot of it. Well, right, and I think, as I, as I said earlier, while that was happening, now I think finally the hooks are getting in and that's when it's, things really start to happen. Yeah, they're, they're very self-directed and uh, very capable and a really fun group to participate. Council Member Milliman, then City Attorney or City Manager, and then we'll wrap her up. I am so sorry. I said, guys, really, I'm just going to go to bed. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so off to a pulp about that. I apologize, apologize, apologize. Um, I just want to say, I think y'all are um, full of, like you said, positive energy, fresh ideas, perspective, progressive thoughts. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't say that enough. And um, I really do hope that one or two of you join join me um, for that conference in October because I think it'll be very, very, very educational. So thank you. Thank you. I'll thank turn you. over the city manager and then we'll say goodnight. Well, I, again, I just want to congratulate the, the committee here. I think, um, of course, I love structure and work plans and yeah. <laughs> So it tells me that you know uh, that you guys are organized, that you put some thought about when things get done and how they, what's the outcome look like. Quite honestly, I think that's where we're trying to take a lot of our committees and boards is to do something similar. So congratulations on that. There, the one topic that you guys touched on that's uh, important to me personally, and I've worked hard in this organization, has to do with diversity and equity. And I think that, I don't know if you've had a conversation with our HR director, Noelle Mink, yet. It's on the, I'm still working to schedule with her. Okay, so. I'm pretty confident you're going to love her. She loves this topic. And her and I have worked really hard at this over the last four or five years. So welcome your thoughts around that conversation, because it is, takes continuous work on this. It's not a one and done. So look forward to that. I did. So, thank Great, you, Mayor. But, uh, Carl, if you will, put this into a Gantt chart format with milestones. Uh, if you would like me to pass that out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, set up. Set up. <laughs> thank you very much for coming in tonight. Really appreciate it. <laughs> you need a magnifying glass. <laughs> thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. God. Software developers. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can meet him in person. I, I, I know. We've been zooming the whole time. I'll tell you the South Metro House guys. Oh, I'm the doodle. You're not the first. Sorry. 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 First to meet the first. Hopefully, second. Yeah. Housing board. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That's okay. It's all good. We'll bring it up. Oh, thank you. Waiting, just waiting for CSA sharing. Thanks, guys. Uh, Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you all for your time. All right, Council, we're going to move on to our last item tonight, and that is item ID number 21 111, comprehensive rezoning process. Uh, let's see, so, Council, uh, we are. We're going to discuss the comprehensive citywide rezoning process. 
Uh, right, then tonight we are going to provide direction to staff uh, to bring an ordinance forward regarding the citywide uh, rezoning process. So, so uh, we will we will be looking to give some direction after we hear everything here. So, it will, City Attorney. Thank you, and I have Jennifer with me to fill in all the blanks. So, um, essentially, you're correct, Mayor. You know what we have been debating about essentially, essentially. <laughs> what we've been debating about is as we go through the ULUC process we are effectively going to rezone close to 13,000 parcels within the city now for the most part for the overwhelming majority of the parcels that will be affected it's really going to be name of so it's not going to change uh, in very many cases the ability to do on your property what you're already doing. Um, when KKC came in and as we evaluated our current city code, uh, obviously council is familiar with, we have a lot of different zoning districts that aren't really used. We don't really need them. And we wanted to bring some more clarity to that. So in the draft that everyone um, has been uh, earmarking the pages on uh, you'll notice we have renamed every zoning district in the city so what the city does not have is a city initiated rezoning process or a comprehensive rezoning process we have a process for rezoning and we experienced that um, this past fall when we went through the downtown uh, when we came up with the DTZ and the character districts. What that led to is following what our current rezoning process is, which is essentially mailing out a notice to every property owner, as well as every property owner within 700 feet of that location. So just the simple downtown location resulted in approximately 2,000 mailings going out. So that's just downtown. When uh, city council envisions, no pun intended, the entire rezoning of the city, we're talking about tens of thousands of mailings having to go out to those parcels, as well as those parcels within 700 feet. Um, it is not necessarily a very efficient or effective way um, for the city to have to send out to every property owner and all those other affected properties an individual notice. Additionally, the current process we have for rezoning also has a posting requirement. So when we did the downtown rezoning, we essentially put a big signs uh, in four locations kind of surrounding that little area. So you can, it, you, you can see the impracticalness of of trying to post notice on all these properties within the entire city. So it's just not something that is easily done, that is efficiently done. Um, there are other jurisdictions in the Denver metropolitan area that have adopted um, a comprehensive rezoning process for when the city is initiating rezoning. It varies um, with what other jurisdictions um, do. A lot of them I wouldn't recommend. For example, Commerce City has a comprehensive rezoning plan. And what their um, cue is for initiating that is if it's, I want to say, two or more properties, three or more property owners, um, that's when the city comprehensive rezoning is initiated. In my mind, legally, if it were challenged, it's, it's akin to what's called spot zoning. Um, not something that we ever want to do. It's a very site-specific zoning that gets more into a quasi-judicial type analysis as opposed to a legislative analysis. Uh, analysis. So what we're doing with the comprehensive rezoning or what we're proposing is a legislative process. The city has, its within its police power, within its land use power, the ability to rezone properties on its own initiative. And so what we have placed out there is anytime the city uh, wants to do a comprehensive rezone and 
I'm assuming that this will be the only time that the city's actually going to do it, is if it affects more than 50 properties, um, we can go through this legislative process. If it doesn't, then we're going to send out, just like we would, just like we did with downtown, just like anyone else, we're going to send them all an individual notice um, if it's less than 50. So where did I get the number 50? I made it up. Um, other jurisdictions have used as, as few as 25. You know, the city of Lone Tree talks about, they say citywide. It's a very ambiguous term. I wouldn't use their version. Uh, Centennial actually uses 50. That's their, uh, I think it's 50, or it could be 40. Um, but just pick the number 50 to, to do this. A, a lot of other jurisdictions actually don't have a city-initiated comprehensive rezoning policy. And I would imagine the reason that they do not is a lot of other cities have touched their codes in fewer than 40 years, um, which they've never needed to go to this kind of drastic of a rewrite. Um, so some cities actually don't have it, but uh, there are some that do. And I guess in our opinion, um, this is probably the most efficient and effective way to accomplish this. As I mentioned, nothing is necessarily going to change for most of the properties that are affected. Um, you know, you're not going to wake up tomorrow and find out that uh, you're now zoned industrial. Um, that's not happening. Um, so that is, you know, so we prepared an ordinance. Essentially, that's what it says. If the city initiates over 50, uh, then we can go through this legislative process of rezoning without having to post their property, without having to publicly notice it specifically. One of the things that we have been doing in the Littleton report that goes out that is received by approximately 12,000 uh, properties is we've been letting people know for a year and a half about this ULUC process that has been happening. It's in every um, report that comes out. And one of the things that we can do prior to the adoption, uh, presumably of the ULUC in October, is we can put together, you know, kind of a big article on this whole process, this whole rezoning, when the public hearing is going to be, what it means, um, where they can get information, who they can contact. Um, and so that's something that I think staff proposes will do going forward towards the uh, final adoption. So that is what is proposed. And Jennifer and I are here to answer questions. Jennifer, to correct all the, the incorrect things I've stated thus far and, and really just get direction from council on, on how you feel about this process and if you're comfortable with it. Great. I, I, a week or two ago, I mentioned to you uh, the referendum that was passed about maybe eight years ago, the citizen referendum it had to do with it, it's, zoning was happening within so many feet. It might have, it might have been this one, the 700 feet. Is, is that the one that passed uh, eight years ago, maybe? Do you recall? I'm, I, I don't recall, but I can certainly. And, and I'm okay. wondering, and, and if so, is, is, does this 700 feet, that, how does that play a role or doesn't play a role in this uh, comprehensive rezoning process? Correct. It's really just going to be the, yeah, it does not play a role. Yeah, because as I recall. City initiated. Uh, rezoning affecting more than 50 parcels. We do not have to abide by the 700 feet um, posting. Right, and I, and I think you tell me. I just want to make sure if you could go back and look at that referendum just to make sure, because I remember when it was it was started by the citizens and passed, passed uh, in the city of Littleton. It was to make sure that property owners within so many feet were well aware that things were being rezoned. Mr. Mayor, can I add just a little bit of that? Sure. Since, since my time here with the city, uh, I remember an ordinance that we brought to you, and I'm thinking four or five years ago, maybe four years ago, I guess, where we added the 700 foot notification. Because prior to that, there was no notification requirement at all. So the referendum you refer to, I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm confident that uh, under at least my time, we brought to you the 700 foot rule. And that could have been with Urban Renewal. Perhaps that. I thought it was uh, the growing data. Scott, did you have something? Did, did, did. No, I just, Mark, I just was going to say the same thing. Well, no, I was just saying that Mark was trying to comment. Um, go to somebody else. I lost my <laughs> <laughs> Next gen is gone. <laughs> <laughs> 
So just a clarification on some of the numbers. So we actually have 15,866 parcels um, in, in the city of Littleton. So 15,866. So, so I, I remember now, is there an example of 50, 50 uh, parcels that would come together for rezoning? I mean, do we have any examples of that around here? Um, Maybe something a little bolder. I don't know. You could have small parcels. Uh, you can get 50 real quick and like northeast uh, along Littleton Boulevard to the north of Littleton Boulevard. Or if yeah. you're way down south, uh, 50 parcels is a lot of property. It's a lot of property. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's, a that's lot of acreage. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably, you know, 30 or 40 acres. Yeah. Yeah, and some other jurisdictions have kind of done acreage yeah. in terms of when it triggers kind of uh, a city-initiated comprehensive rezoning. I just felt that parcels was probably easier. Anyone else, Council? Uh, we'll go with Councilman Rick and then Kelly. My concern was uh, if you're not uh, sending out 16,000 letters and 600 signs all over the city, uh, how do you contact people? Littleton Report, uh, the, what other avenues do you have to inform those that, you know, the five people that don't have computers in Littleton or uh, people that normally just ignore this stuff? Uh, uh, but, you know, you're rezoning the property, which is big times. Uh, yeah. how, how do you get to them without, like, say, sending out the 16,000 letters? How do you get to them? And, you know, from, from staff's perspective, I, I think that's been one of the challenges. Uh, you know, as we've tried to get more engagement in the ULUC, it's been a little challenging. We've heard from some of our, um, you know, studios that, you know, we have the same 100 people signing up. And, and how do we get more people involved so I, I think it's really just more you know community outreach in terms of trying to provide as um, you know much information as we can through through whatever various means of communication we have so you know we have had articles in the Littleton report for you know for two years and whether or not people read them or not or throw them away um, we can't really help that well we certainly will post notice in the in the paper for this, granted, how many people are reading papers? Um, you know, it's something that I think staff continues to to struggle with in terms of how do we how do we meet everyone um, on their level and getting this information. If this comes up for a vote. It'd be nice to see a a half page action report as to what ideas you have on getting information out. So um, some things that you're going to see rolling out in the next few weeks is we actually are creating posters both in Spanish and English about the ULUC and encouraging people to take a survey, driving them to the Envision Littleton website that the ULUC is, is here and please give us your comments. Um, we will have staff at all the meet, greet, meets um, that council will be doing over the next three months. Um, we also will be, staff will be at the museum concerts um, and I think we have done, are going to be doing a couple farmers markets. So a lot of the things that we did for Envision Littleton when we had the comp plan, we'll be doing those same things again. So, and we will obviously put the notice in the Littleton Independent as well as the Littleton Report. Um, I even talked with um, our finance directory to, uh, director, um, Tiffany Hooten, about putting in with utility billing. Unfortunately, the, the mass utility building has already gone out, but a reminder will be going out in July, I think she said. So we can add a notice in that, but that just is to those people that have not paid yet. So it, it wouldn't be everyone. But, you know, of our 15,000 parcels, uh, we, the Littleton Report does go to over 12,000 uh, postal patrons is what they're called. 15,866. 15,866. Kelly, then Carol. Thank you. That was along the lines of my question, too, as well. So I appreciate that question. And um, I think it's fantastic that you're going to uh, try to reach out to um, uh, non-English speaking um, residents too as well because I feel like they sometimes get um, forgotten um, so I very much appreciate that and um, I was going to ask too uh, prior to 1974 is that the last time 76 76 did was there rezoning procedure like you know and now to announce you know to 
communicate to citizens prior to? I mean, have, have we just not been doing it since 1976? In terms of sending out notifications, mm -hmm. um, you know, most of the rezoning that happened back in that time was probably more of resident initiated. Um, and so there was probably a procedure with posting something physically on the property, uh, letting adjacent neighbors know, um, as well as publication in the paper. But uh, in terms of having to, a requirement for them to mail um, notices to outside of, you know, just their adjacent properties, I doubt that that existed back then. Well, I appreciate this, and you, this is huge. Thank you for, for providing this to the community. It's great. Great. You, you said several times that these changes don't amount to much change. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, what if um, that there is a zoning change, not right now, but in the future, that does amount to a lot of change. Would we want to have a provision where that does go, have it, more notification? What I'm thinking of, it's one thing to have the, the name of the zone you live in uh, from whatever residential to whatever residential, be quite another to have the parcel next to you change to uh, car storage, like happened in my neighborhood. Um, so this current process only involves when the city is doing the initiative. City initiated. And it has to be uh, more than 50 parcels. Every other time, if it's below that, or if it's a, a resident wanting to change their zoning, um, they are going to have to send out that notification to all property owners within 600 feet, or 700 feet. Anyone else? <clears throat> um, do we have a sense of what some of the costs are, well, in terms of money to do mailings, et cetera, but also in terms of staff time to do one of these kind of mass notifications. Um, um, I, mean, I assume it's a, it's a huge amount, a huge inconvenience, but I'd like to know what we're really talking about. Um, so I, I can give you the example of the downtown rezoning. Um, I think that the staff time that it took to determine what we were going to actually have to do um, was significant, several hours. Um, then actually having a staff person dedicated to um, creating the list, uh, that takes a while, and then calling the list so we don't have duplicate um, mailings, um, and then dealing with all of the ones that get returned because our data, our, our data is only as good as what we get from the county, which is usually about three to four months behind. Um, so we had a lot of things returned. Then you have the actual cost of the postage. We have gone down to postcards, so you're not paying for a letter, but you are still paying for a postcard. So there's that, that cost to the city um, as well. And yes, we are fairly short-staffed, um, given all the all the council priorities, which are very exciting. Um, but yes, um, it, it is a very large time commitment. And some of that is just looking at stamps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, council, any other? Nobody lost their life looking stamps. <laughs> 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 That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> For you, give you an example. So I think downtown is probably the most recent. So if you would like this to move forward, we can put into the staff communication kind of the estimated cost, you know, maybe in some form, but certainly give you the downtown example. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just looking at the um, staff communication. You know, and I see 2,000 notifications per cent, like you talked about. It sounds majorly inconvenient, but I mean, we have to balance that against. What council member Fay and council member Rodnicki brought up that yeah, it's a big deal, right? To have a property rezone, even if it's city initiated. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to have all, all those facts. Um, one of the other things I can add in doing the research of, you know, what do other communities do with this? Um, so some of them that don't have the um, posting requirement have, you know, the equivalent of a neighborhood meeting requirement. Um, when we did the downtown, we kind of checked the block with the neighborhood meeting with the fact that we had had Envision Studios about it, that we had gotten that notice out. So, um, 
you know, us having um, neighborhood meetings on this, I don't think staff would be opposed to in terms of we're available, come, come learn more about it, have an open house, um, you know, once we do have a zoning map um, to discuss. I don't think staff would, would have any issue with that. That's a good idea. Okay, thanks, yeah. So, Council, a couple things I heard. The, the cost we're interested in, the, the costs. Uh, what, else, what did you say? Was it was it cost that you were honing in on? or? Uh, yeah, both in terms of, you know, hard costs like stamps, and postcards, and so on, but also in terms of staff time. I think Jennifer gave us a pretty good sense of some of the some of the real yeah, staff. But you'd like to see some of those, yeah, that information. Like sense of what really and the other one was uh, notifications. I heard a uh, council member Renicki mentioned notification. How will we go about doing that? Uh, is there anything else that we uh, do we have any other direction? If not, we're good. Let's go. That's a, you got some direction out of it. I'm not sure what the direction is. We're going to come forward with some cost figures, right? But it's going to, well, it's going to have some of that information. Uh, the, the cost figures is also notification as well as. So it's kind of various options, is what you're saying. Yeah, so it'll it'll be an ordinance. So we're going to bring an ordinance in front of you that will have that information in the presentation. All right, Council. Do we have anything else from the City Manager? No. City Attorney. No, Mayor. Thank you. Well, to be clear, for an authority dinner is Thursday. Thursday, <laughs> five thirty. All right, museum. Cool. All right. It is uh, eight sixteen. We are adjourned. Thank you.